Puppy imprinting. What should you do? What shouldn't you do? That what works, what doesn't work? Question that I get all the time. Those of you that checked in to watch some uh, cute videos of puppies, check on out now because it's just going to be me talking and dropping what I consider to be some knowledge. Some of you may disagree, but that's okay. Um, hit that like and subscribe though before you check out. Uh, I'm going to be posting more videos of cute puppies doing cute things and also functional things as well for those of you that care. Um, so let's talk about puppy imprinting. I get this question a lot. Um, people place a lot of importance on, you know, that puppy imprinting period. And it is important, but maybe not quite as important as you might think. So let's go through this topic because it's a complex topic. It's not just do A, B, and C and everything will be fine. It's a complex topic. So what's the most important thing you can do when you're imprinting your puppy? Well, here's the thing. You want to introduce your puppy to moderate levels of exposure to environmental stress and social stress. I say stress, right? A lot of people are like, oh, no, we just want to socialize them and everything's got to be positive and fun. It's not. You can say that to yourself, but everything is stress. Everything new that your dog sees is stress, okay? Because they've never seen it before and, and it can be something that they find a little bit scary. Now, of course, some puppies really show the stress. They get their tails down, you know, they want to run behind you, they want to hide, they cry. And then some puppies, you can barely see it. They look almost 100% normal. If you know what you're looking for, you can see those subtle signs a little bit. It's not maybe a lot of stress, but it's a little bit, right? Everything new is a stressor. And of course, like people, dogs handle stress differently. And of course, the way they handle stress is dictated to some uh, a huge amount, a huge degree by their genetics. But again, off the topic of genetics, let's focus on what you can do with your puppy. If I have, let's talk about I have a normal puppy. Like everything's normal. He's a happy social guy. Yeah, sure. Sometimes he's a little bit worried about stuff. What should I do with that puppy? Well, I take that puppy out in public. Not like every day, but you know, every couple days I take him in public. I walk him through the park. I let him see geese. I let him see squirrels. I let him see other dogs. I let him see people. You know, if I see a set of stairs, I'll take him up the stairs. If, you know, playground equipment's great because I'll, I'll have him kind of go a little bit on the playground equipment and just get used to feeling different things on his paws. Um, you know, I'll take him to PetSmart. I'll do all this kind of stuff. You know, if um, he seems open to a social encounter with people, like if someone's like, hey, cute puppy, can we pet him? And he seems like he wants to interact with them. I'll allow the interaction from time to time, not too much, but I will allow it. Um, just so he can, you know, have a positive experience. Um, uh, with other dogs, I do not allow interaction with strange dogs. If there's another puppy that we happen to meet, um, and the puppy, and they're both, like, they seem friendly and open, sure, I might allow an encounter from time to time. Again, this is a huge thing for me, and this is why, this is where I differ with a lot of people on what to do when it comes to socialization. So what I'm describing is socialization and exposure. And, um, you know, that's really important stuff. I think that probably the most important thing you can do um, when they're young. Now, let's talk about the puppy that's a little bit more shy and fearful. Now, with this puppy, you know, like let's say a puppy that's really anxious about social interactions, like he sees another dog, another person, and you can tell he's really worried, upset, and afraid of, of why this. I think the, uh, what a lot of people do is they make the mistake of forcing a lot of social interaction. So they take that puppy who has a fear of the interaction and they force the interaction. They think, okay, he has these interactions and as long as they're positive, he's going to turn out to really love these interactions. And really, nothing could be further from the truth. Usually what you're doing is you just really imprint on the dog the stress of the interaction. That's why you get a lot of people that come to you, but I get a lot of people that come to me and they're like, well, in the beginning, he's always really barky. And then once he gets to know them, he, he you know, he settles down and he, he gets friendly. Or in some cases, they never, they never kind of settle down. Even if they've kind of spent, you know, five, 10 minutes with another dog or another person, they're still really insecure and snappy and nervous. So, and of course it depends on how bad the insecurity of the dog is. Some of them kind of just get over it after a couple minutes and some of them don't. But a lot of people have the big issues, even with adult dogs, with that initial interaction. And it's because you create a lot of stress around that, all right? So when you have a puppy who says, I'm afraid of strange people, and you say, okay, well, you're gonna meet 100 people. Well, guess what? You're making all these fears come true. You're making all that stress come true. What I do with these types of dogs is I don't 
force the interaction. I just take him around people. I take him around strange dogs and I don't allow interaction with those things that he's scared of. I just basically focus the dog on me and hey, pay attention to me. We're going to play. We're going to eat food. We're going to have fun. And that's the interaction that he is, that he gets. And if I prevent, if I keep that puppy safe from unwanted social interaction, what happens is after a while, he neutralizes. He stops caring because guess what? He learns those strange people and those strange dogs don't mean anything. Now, what'll probably happen is your puppy will go from like avoidance and fear to maybe barking at at the strange dog or the strange person. And me, I correct this behavior. I don't allow it. I'll be like, hey, 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 stop it. And then I redirect the puppy into something more productive, like eating a treat or 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 playing with a toy or something like this. So the puppy also learns that being reactive to the thing that you're afraid of is not acceptable either. I strive for neutrality. And what can happen with neutrality is actually can open the door for the dog to be more social. Or if the dog's not oriented to be social, well, he wasn't gonna be social anyways, but at least now he's not reactive. So with me, what I do with these puppies that are that are fearful, and even with adult dogs that are fearful of strange people and strange dogs, and, and, and the reactive dogs, because like I said before, a lot of the issues that we face here as trainers with, with people's pets and puppies that they bring in are brought on by um, you know, social anxiety and, and fear and stress. So guess what? We make, we don't make their, 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 their dreams come true, so to speak, or their nightmares. Their nightmare is, is they perceive at social interactions going to be very stressful and they have issues. They, they have fear for their personal safety. It doesn't matter whether it's a reasonable fear, fear or uh, an unreasonable fear. It, it's what they have. That's what they, that's how they feel. So what we do is we just prevent anything bad from happening. And for them, whether or not that stranger gives them a treat, it's still bad in the beginning. And that's what they imprint on. So you've got to prevent that. Um, and and it, invariably, it always works. If you do this properly, your dog will neutralize. For them, strange people and strange dogs just become like a tree or a signpost. It's there. It doesn't mean anything in, in the context of me. I don't need to be worried about it. And then from there, the door can be opened for the dog to be social or even if not social at least neutral all right so stop forcing unwanted social interactions that's a big thing with puppy imprinting and correct the unwanted behavior you're not allowed to bark at people you're not allowed to bark at strange dogs knock it off and you know give them a little leash correction let them know that's not okay and model the correct behavior and protect them from the stressful interactions that that are unnecessary now of course if the person lives with you and the puppy's afraid of that person in the beginning, well, that's a different thing. But if it's a stranger, I'm talking like in terms of strange dogs and strange people. Now, um, let's talk about training. What training is, oh, people think like, hey, like I got to train them all this stuff when they're young, otherwise they won't know. For me, that's not the case at all. I get puppies in here, or dogs in here all the time, one years old. They don't have any training. And I can train them, no problem. And, and and you see after like a month or two, like the dog looks like he's been trained for one year. So, you know, from the perspective of, you know, do you have to have to do things with them as puppies? No, you don't. But here's what I have noticed. Dogs that are not introduced to pressure prior to a year of age, you know, like they have not been introduced, you know, prior to a year um, to any kind of pressure. And I'm talking like leash pressure, like pulling on the dog, you know, to make him sit, to make him lie down, to make him come. That pressure becomes very stressful for them when you introduce them to it. And they have, uh, they generally will have like a really like kind of crazy response. Like they'll really overreact to the pressure because they've never felt it before. Okay. So, and it takes a while to work them through that. So for me, I'm big on, you know, collar and leash and showing the puppy pressure. Okay, and, and, and that's why in all my puppy classes, we do pressure to position. And it's not because, you know, we're trying to correct them or anything like that. It's I need to habituate the dog to pressure because there's gonna be numerous occasions throughout the dog's life and training in which I need to use pressure to show the dog what to do or to make the dog do something he doesn't wanna do, like get in the bathtub or climb up those stairs um, or get in his crate. And if he's never been, you know, um, shown pressure, and how to react to pressure, which is to give. This is basically what we do with horses as well, right? Those of you that are horse people, you gotta habituate the colt or the filly to pressure. Otherwise, if they've never felt pressure, they have a complete panic attack. And dogs are no different, okay? Um, and then the other thing is eating from my hands. That's big. Dogs that haven't eaten from your hands for a year 
and you suddenly are trying to feed them a treat, they have no clue what the hell you're doing. So what I do with puppies, at the very minimum, I show them food in my hand, following the food, right? And it doesn't matter what I do with the food, I just teach them to follow the food, all right? And get them used to kind of moving their body around to get the, the food reward. And then um, the other thing that I do is, like I said, the pressure. And usually when I'm, with, when I'm making pressure, so let's say I'm, I'm teaching the dog, I'm habituating the dog to up pressure, you know, pressure for a sit. I have the food in one hand, I have the leash in the other hand, and we do them together. I pull up and use the food to use the food as well. And the puppy invariably sits, I remove the pressure and feed the food, right, to the dog. And the same thing with the down. You pull down and use the hand with the food in it to make the dog go down, and then you feed the dog. So really quickly the dog starts to learn pressure and food together and and he learns that the pressure goes away when I move into the pressure the pressure goes away and also the food comes from the hand and very quickly the dog you know it opens the dog's mind up to these possibilities which then allow you to basically train whatever behavior you want to train in the future so puppy imprinting you know in this way is important at the very minimum now let's talk about ideal puppy imprinting well you see it in my videos right like I've got you know my uh, uh, German Shepherd gauge I've got uh, my Malinois Dizzy right I'm doing all this stuff with them they never eat from their bowl they only eat for work sometimes I, I you know I'm in a big hurry so you know I, I'll only make them do a few things and I just give them huge handfuls of food for those things but that really like those dogs really want to work and the reason why they want to work is they've learned that work is the way to eat so they have such a positive association with the work because all puppies love to eat, right? The only puppies that don't like to eat are puppies that um, you feed, you give them too much free food. And what's free isn't desirable. What is available in copious amounts isn't desirable. Now, what if you take your puppy down and he doesn't really want to work, he's kind of disinterested? Well, guess what? I put the food away and I put the puppy away and I say, okay, dude, better luck next time. It's your choice, when do you want to eat, right? When the puppy is motivated, and you'll see it, he's pushing you, he's like, hey, let's do something, he's he's offering behaviors, he's sitting, he's, he's lying down, he's doing all this stuff, well, then this is the time to, you know, obviously train the puppy. And within a couple of sessions of doing this, within like a one week, you do this for one week where you don't feed the puppy except from your hat and for work, and you, you, you do like maybe like three sessions a day, you feed that puppy all his food, right? Real quick, you're gonna see how motivated that dog becomes you know, to work, to come to you, to sit, to down, to whatever it is you want to do with that dog, to track, he will become a super motivated dog, okay? So this is my puppy imprinting. Now with toys, I also play with toys and I show the dog, the puppy how to play with toys. Toys are not, I don't really give my puppies toys like a ball or a tug to like go away and play with. Toys are between me and the puppy, all right? That's, that's a really important thing that I introduce. I don't do a ton of it before they're done teething, um, because I just don't find that it really makes a huge difference. But at the at the end of the day, it is important that the dog learn to interact with you with toys. Now, I'll give them stuff to chew on, like those Nyla bones or a, a deer antler or whatever, and they can have that to chew on for their gums and their teeth. But um, that's, you know, that's uh, I don't really give them toys just to play with on their own. One more thing uh, before I forget, crating. Crating is really, really important. I train these puppies to be crated because... I need the pup, like almost every example of uh, separation anxiety that I see is because people don't crate their dog and they don't crate the dog away from them. The dog is always with them. So the dog develops a social dependence, especially for a dog that's a little bit less confident. They develop this complete dependence on always being in the, in the room with the handler. So if you plan on going to work ever, or you plan on ever leaving your dog somewhere because you want to go on a vacation, this can be very difficult for your dog, and then you get the, 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 the property destruction and so on and so forth. So for me, up to at least a year, my puppies are crated um, in the basement when I'm not you know, interacting with them socially, or, uh, sorry, when I'm not in the home with them. If, if me or my family's in the home, then they're on their placemats, um, and that's another video altogether. But, you know, this is, just a real quick blurb with, on um, what I do with puppies and what I think should be done with puppies. Um, obviously, you can get more in depth than that, but and I think I'll probably shoot some more videos on it. But um, for now, hopefully, this kind of helps you guys.